one of our officers is missing. We present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. Getting the Bird, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender with this week's guests, Frank Williams and Larry Martin. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. As the Nazi menace continues its ruthless repression of Western Europe and its armies in the East keep up their relentless progress towards Moscow, it seems that the fate of the civilized world hangs in the balance. While in a quiet corner of England, in a little butcher's shop, Lance Corporal Jack Jones, stalwart of the Warmington-on-Sea Home Guard, poses this vital question. Will you have scrag end or brisket, Miss Meadows? <laughs> well, I've got three books this time. My brother's on leave from the army. Have I got enough for a joint? Well, not unless you take brisket as cheap, you see, so you get more of it. Oh. But, of course, it's tougher. Oh. But then if you have cutlets, there's less of it but it's more toothsome. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'll have cutlets then. I haven't got any. <laughs> if you haven't got any, what are you blathering on about them for? No, don't be impatient, Mr Fraser. There's a war on, you know. Oh. I tell you what, how about some champions? Oh, they'll do then. I like to feed my brother up if I can. He was at Dunkirk, you know. Oh, Dunkirk, was he? Well, in that case, I'll let you have two sausages. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't get any sausages, Mr Jones. Well, you weren't at Dunkirk, were you, Mr Godfrey? <laughs> no, but my sister made some upside-down cakes for those gallant boys. And roll bandages. Well, I'm sorry, you can't have sausages for bandages and cutting cakes, you know. I've got to draw the line somewhere. Take three and seven, please, Doris. Can't ever so, Mr. Jones. I'll see you next week. Right, though, right, though. Now, now, what can I do for you, Mr. Fraser? I didn't have any corned beef last week, so I've come for it now. We well, should have come this morning, Mr. Fraser. Look, that's all I got. Look, just a few bits. Gosh, they're just crumbs. I'm not paying the sliced rate for a lot of crumbs. <laughs> Well, well, let's see now. I tell you what, you can have the lot for sixpence. Right, done. <coughs> uh, uh, have you have you heard about Sergeant Wilson? No. What about him? The sea is not to be found. He hasn't been at the bank all day. No, as you very well know, I can't stand gossip and tittle-tattle of any kind, but it's my belief that there has been a rift in the loot. <laughs> Who's loot? <laughs> Mrs. Pike's loot, you old fool. Oh, dear, poor Mr. Wilson. It's funny you have mentioned that, Mr. Fraser. As I was coming out of the library with the new Ethel M. Dell romance of my sister, I saw him in Alexander Gardens with a girl. Really, Mr. Godfrey? I knew it! There's a woman at the bottom of it. He had his arm around her, but I, I'm sure there's nothing in it. Oh, hey, we young man. There's depravity in every line of his face. It'll be the ruin of him. He's run amok. Oh, not Mr. Wilson. Not surely. No, no. Look out. Here's Walker. Not a word to a soldier, and see. Yeah, well, you can rely on me. All in all. Ah, oh, hello, hello, Joe. Hello, 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 Joe. Uh, Who saw this then? The three wise men. Now, just a minute. No use you coming round here, Joe. You're not registered with me, and anyway, it's closing time. How about a nice bit of rabbit, Jonesy? <laughs> You'll be lucky. I haven't even seen a rabbit for six weeks. You have now. There. Oh. Blimey, that's all right. Oh dear, it's a shame they have to be killed. They look so pretty hopping about in the fields. <laughs> hey, where did you get it, Joe? It's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> he decided to give up the pictures and help the war effort. <laughs> it's five bob, and I want the skin back. What for? I wouldn't have put it past him to get it refelled. <laughs> I've got a friend who makes mink coats. Well, you can't get the mink, can you? Well, one's no good to me, Joe. It'd just make my life a misery. If the word got around, I'd got a rabbit. It'd be a queue right past Timothy White's. Things are that bad, are they, Jonesy? Oh, a terrible Joe. I've had no offal since Friday. Less than half a sausage per book. And two tins of corned beef was blown. And they blame me, you know. I can't sleep at night for it. I'm at my wit's end, Joe, and that's a fact. Ah, uh, you mustn't take it like that. It's not your fault. No, but the way they go on, you'd think it was. 
If I had 50 rabbits to sell, it might restore their faith in me. No, there's no chance of that, Jonesy. We can't get the ammunition. Well, I've got to get something off the ration from somewhere. Something off the ration, eh? Yeah, well, uh, it's just possible I might be able to help you there. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Joe. Hey, hey, Joe. Have you, have you heard about Sergeant Wilson? No? What about him? Well, don't breathe a word to your soul, but it came to my notice that there has been a rift in the loop. Come in. Yes, Jones? Sergeant Wilson is still absent without leave, or at least not present without leave, sir. <laughs> I see. Thank you, Jones. Send Private Pike in, would you? Right, sir, right, sir. Private Pike? Yes, Mr. Jones. What is it? Captain Manning wants to see you. Shall I call the men in, sir? Yes, please, Jones. Alan Pike, have you seen Sergeant Wilson? Um, he, he's not at Mum's, Mr. Manning. It's not what I asked you. It's not like Wilson at all. One thing you can say for him, he's dependable. If he doesn't appear by tonight, I shall have to contact the police. Uh, ah, um, well, see, I, I don't think you ought to do that, Mr. Manning. Oh? Why not? Well, I'm sure he'll turn up sooner or later. You're hiding something, Pike. No, Mr. Manry. Come on, out with it, boy. Well, well, the night before last, Mum and Uncle Sergeant Wilson had words. <laughs> ah, <clears throat> now we're getting somewhere. What happened? Well, I was in bed at the time, so I couldn't hear much leaning over the banisters. <laughs> But he shouted at Mum, so she pushed him out of the door and then threw his ration book after him. Oh, yeah. Go on. Well, then a bit later, when he threw pebbles up at her bedroom window, she said, clear off, you beast. And then she threw something out of the window which made a crashing sound when it broke. Now I'm beginning to understand. Well, Mum got up early and picked up the pieces. I see. All except the handle. You better keep it to yourself, Pike. What, the handle? No, don't do it. <laughs> Cut along now. Yes, sir. Mum's the word. <laughs> right, four in three ranks. Look sharp about it. Here, hang on a minute, Jonesy. Come on, hurry up, Private Walker. You're late. Your troubles are over, Jonesy. I've got them. Got what? You're off the ration meat. Pigeons. About six dozen of them. Good heavens, where, where are they? They're here. What, here in the hall? No, no, in the boiler house next to Mannering's office. Well, we, we can't leave them in there. We'll have to get them into my cold room. They'll go off in the boiler house. No, they won't. They're not dead yet. <laughs> not dead? We're no good to me flapping about, you know. Don't worry, they're doped. That's how I caught them. Well, where'd you get them from? Come on now. No talking, Jones. Right, sir, right, sir. What? Shut! The tune ready for inspection, sir. Thank you, Corporal. I'll start with you. Sure. Have a look at your rifle. Yep. Oh, absolutely first class, Jones. Well, you know, the British rifle has always been very easy to clean, sir. Before the Lee Enfield, we had the Martini Henry. That was a very fine rifle, the Martini Henry. Yes, thank you, Jones. Oh, we had it right up to the Battle of Omnium. I'm sure you did. <laughs> One day we was having a bit of a battle and, and a young officer just out from England joined us. What's your name, said the colonel. Lieutenant Fuchs, sir, he says. And you spell it with two small Fs. <laughs> you need something to fight with, says the colonel. Will you have a long Lee Enfield or a martini? Make it a martini, says the officer, and go easy with the ice. <laughs> so you see, to appreciate that joke to the full, you have to know that martini is a drink... Much patronised by the gentry in high circles. I did know that, Joe. Yeah, and the young, young officer, he was confusing that with a martini rifle. Yeah, I see? know, I know. Yeah, they had it with ice, you see, sir. The drink, of course, not the rifle. I'm well aware of that, Joe. Personally, I like a mild and bitter myself. Stop like. talking. Why aren't you in uniform, Walker? Uh, sorry, sir, I was supplying essential supplies. That's no excuse. We're all doing essential work, you know. Uh, sorry, sir. There was a bit of a flap on. <laughs> right, man. Stand at ease. 
Now, there's a voluntary church parade on Sunday, and I shall expect you all to attend. I have asked the vicar to shorten his sermon, Mr. Manning. He went on rather a long time before, and it, it wasn't very convenient. <laughs> I think you'd better take that up with the vicar himself, Godfrey. Now, men, your arms drill has been getting very sloppy, so we're going to brass it up. And since Sergeant Wilson isn't with us tonight, I should take it myself. My right, properly, ease everyone. Squad! Oh. Squad! Oh. Silence in the ranks. Oh. Squad! Oh. Squad! Oh. Oh. What's that? Oh, whatever it was, oh. sir, it's coming from behind the curtains on the stage. Blimey, the vicar's not rehearsing his panto already, is he? <laughs> Be quiet, Walker. I'll keep calm, everyone. I'll just get my revolver out. <laughs> right, Jones. When I say now, draw the curtains. Right, sir. Now! <laughs> Wilson! What on earth? <laughs> Sakes! <laughs> Look at that, Godfrey. Isn't that about the whiskey he's holding? <laughs> Aye, an empty one. What a picture of depravity. <laughs> Wilson! Wilson, wake up! What? Oh, yeah, yes, of course. I'm so sorry, sir. Oh, dear. I, I must have dropped off. Go into my office, please, Sergeant Wilson. Yes, well, yes, of course, sir, of course. Well, good evening, everybody. How nice to be able to see you all. Yeah, Wilson, at the office. Right, yes. Carry on here, Corporal Jones. Right, very good, sir. Oh, oh, Captain Manning, sir. Yes, Jones? Uh, what shall I carry on doing? The drill, of course. Oh, yes, of course, sir. Just slipped my mind for a moment. <laughs> hey, I'd give a pound to be a fly on the wall in that office, man. Mr. Fraser, I really don't think it's any of our business. <laughs> now then, Wilson. What's the meaning of this? Hmm? I said, what is the meaning of this? I'm so sorry, sir, but I, 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 I'm a bit dizzy. You look all in. You'd better sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <coughs> You've been drinking? What? Oh, well, yes, sir. Was that as well? Oh, dear, dear, my, my head. You look as though you've had quite a skinful. Yeah, well, uh, you see, well, Walker, Walker, you see, got me a bottle of whiskey. I rather think I finished it. You better tell me all about it. The last report I had of you was outside Mrs. Pike's. Oh, yes. What a good job she missed. <laughs> yes, it was all a misunderstanding, so you know. She, she thought I'd been... Uh, she thought I'd What's been... the matter? Well, she thought I'd... Uh... <laughs> good heavens, what was that? What was what? Well, well, uh... well nothing, sir. Nothing at all. Nothing, sir. Oh, nothing. pull us up together, Wilson. You're getting woolly-minded. Oh, sorry, sir. But you see, uh, it really all began many years ago, not long after the last... Uh, the last... Wilson. I'm sorry, sir. But not long after the last... Uh... Oh, God, there it goes again. What's the matter with you, Wilson? You keep wandering off in a dream. Yeah, but I, I, you see, I, I keep seeing birds, you see. Well, makes a change from pink elephants. <laughs> you take my advice, you'll sign the pledge. Right. Now, look, Wilson, I'm not going to sit here and listen to any more of your wanderings. There's a war on, you know. Those troops out there need training. If you want to remain part of this platoon, you'll go and give them half an hour's arms drill. Yes, sir, quite, sir. But I could have sworn I saw a pigeon. Now, get a grip on yourself and get on with it. Right. And we'll talk about this after parade. Yes, sir, yes. All right, Jones, uh, I'll take over now. All right, probably a deal, squad. Squad, attention. Yeah, well, that includes you, Pike. I said, squad, shun. I'm not going to. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You heard me? I'm not going to. Oh, very well, then. I shall have to inform Captain Mannering. Oh, you've done it no lad. That was mutiny. <laughs> You'll be shot. <laughs> Miss Wilson, what is it now? Oh, I'm sorry, sir, to trouble you, but uh, Pike says he's not going to. He's not going to what? Stand to attention. Oh, does he? I'll deal with him in a minute. Now, look, Wilson, you seem to be losing your grip. I think you'd better take a few days' leave. Get yourself sorted out. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Pike! You wanted me, Mr. Manreen? What's all this about, Pike? May I talk to you in private, sir? I think you'd better. That'll be all, thank you, Wilson. All right, sir. Thank you, sir, yes. Pike, Pike. What have you got to say? I'm not to take any notice of Sergeant Wilson at all. <laughs> Mum said. <laughs> Am I hearing you right, Pike? Yes, Mr. Manring. Mum said if I saw him, I was just to ignore him, so I did. Not here, Pike. I'm running this platoon. Not your mother. Oh, oh, she didn't say I was to ignore you. Oh, that's very generous of her. But she said Uncle, Uncle Sergeant, Sergeant Wilson was a, was a cassin... 
said he was a, a cassette. Oh, get on with it, boy. Mr. Manreen. What are you staring at? Mr. Manreen, there's a pigeon in your pigeon hole. <laughs> Behind you, look, there, there, there. Catch it! Good heavens! Whatever. Jones, walk up. My office is alive with pigeons. Hang on, Captain Manreen, I'll take care of it. Open the side door, Pike. Get him out. Yes, sir. No, no, don't, don't do that. Shoot, shoot. him up, Jonesy. Shoot, yeah, right, right. Coo, brr, brr. Come along, my little darling. Are you at the bottom of all this, Walker? Ah, oh, well, yes, sir. Uh, well, you see, there was this pal of mine who's a pigeon fancier. Only he doesn't fancy him anymore. So, uh, I thought you could train him to take messages. Where are they coming from? Well, I put them in the boiler house next door. There must be a hole in the wall. Oh, this is too much. My sergeant incapable, the troops won't obey orders, and now my officer's an aviary. You'd better go and dispose of these birds right away. Yes, Mr. Mannering. Right away, sir. Oh, Mr. Mannering, it's not fair. Look what those pigeons have gone and done on my forage cap. <laughs> I might be mad. No, don't be so childish, Pike. Anyway, it's supposed to bring good luck. <laughs> That's a fine barrage we're sending up tonight. Yes. 3.7s, mostly. Aye. What noisy things are they, Mr. Mannering? It's gone nine. T turn the wireless up, Pike. We're missing the news. Right, Mr. Mannering. Uh, sorry we've been so long, but we had to get the pigeons topped and tailed and into cold storage. Uh, they're all safely stowed in my cold room now, sir. By the way, how much do I owe you, Joe? Five pounds to you. I had to give ten bob to Ted for topping them. We'll have the cash first thing in the morning. Walker, Jones, I don't think I want to hear any more about pigeons, thank you. Uh oh, that reminds me, sir. Mm. We, 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 we bought a brace for you and your good lady, sir. Oh, thank you very much, Jones. Turn the wireless up, Pike. All the raids were carried out on the marshalling yards at hand. From all these operations, three of our aircraft are missing. And now for some home news. The mysterious drop in the number of pigeons at Trafalgar Square formed the subject of a question in Parliament. The Home Secretary said he saw no cause for alarm and promised a full-scale investigation. Answering a supplementary question, the Minister said he felt it most unlikely that there was any link between this event and the fall in the population of apes on the Rock of Gibraltar. Walker? Not the apes, Mr. Mannering. Cross my arm. I have not touched one single ape. The Minister of Agriculture, when questioned about the sea... Switch the wires off, right back. Yes, sir. ...said that he... Here you are, Jones. I think this is your brace of pigeons. No, 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 sir. No, they're not, sir. No, they're, they're walkers. Yeah, hang on a minute, Jonesy. You bought them, all of them, remember? They're yours. No, I didn't. I, I didn't pay for them. I didn't pay for them. So they're still yours. You have my permission to fall out, Jones and Walker, in case you've anything particular you want to do. No, no, I'm, I'm staying on duty, sir. Here's the key to the shop, Joe. Come on. You're better going to move on, aren't you? So oh, very much. Don't hang about, Walker. Off you go. Do you think MI5 will come round, Mr. Manreen? <laughs> I can just see the headlines now. Home Guard Commander arrested for chasing birds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm set up. Well, I don't know what Walker's done with them, Mr. Godfrey. They, they were out of my shop when I got there this morning. It's an awful pity when rations are so short. People have been awfully glad to have them. Oh, hi, they would that good for him. Uh, hey, Jonesy. What is it? What is it, Joe? It's done. And it wasn't easy, I can tell you. Did anyone see you? Of course not. I'll put three dozen into the... Uh... No, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want to know nothing about it. Oh, no. You didn't destroy them, Mr. Walker. I, I couldn't bear the thought. Do you think I'm a mug? In a few days' time, I might be able to let you have a couple. <laughs> That's provided we don't have an heat wave. Good evening, man. Oh, evening, sir. Sir. Mr. Manreen. Yes, Pike. Please, sir. Mum says if you see Uncle Arthur, would you ask him to have a word with her? Well, I don't expect to see him, Pike. I've given him short confession leave to sort himself out. Oh, see. Only she's whitewashing the spare bedroom ceiling. I think she wants some help. A shame. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought he was much good at that sort of thing. Well, he holds the steps for her. <laughs> Well, he's promised to be back for church parade. Oh, thank you, Mr. Manrich. I'll tell Mum that. Uh, Captain Manrich, sir, permission to see you alone for a minute. Certainly, Jones. Mm -hmm. Come into my office. Right, that, thank you, sir. 
Now, oh, Jones, what is it? Well, sir, I thought you would wish to know that the things with the feathers that we don't mention have been put in a place that I don't want to know about, and you don't neither, by someone who shall remain anonymous, and we won't be hearing no more about it. <laughs> I see. I hope you get my meaning, sir. Yes, very clearly, Jones. Ah, Captain Maverick. Oh, good evening, Vicar. I wonder if um, I wonder if you'd approve the hymns for Sunday. I thought, lead kindly light, rock of ages, God moves in a mysterious way, and onward Christian soldiers. Yes, they seem all right to me. Nothing very controversial there. <laughs> the reason I was asking is because we haven't had an organist since poor Mrs. West passed away, so we have to sing unaccompanied, which means the congregation must know the hymns. I give them the first note, of course, on my pitch pipe. Yes. Well, I expect we'll manage uh, uh, Permission to interject, sir. What is it? Well, there's no need for the vicar to use his little pipe, sir. You mean you think I should la la it? No, 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 no. No, we can't have him la la it. Well, I quite agree with Captain Battering. I'd much rather than la la la. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is the vicar can use his pipe for the first three hymns, but I am conversant with the organ for onward Christian soldiers. Oh, well, thank you very much, Corporal Jones. It'll make a nice change, won't it, uh, Captain Maverick? Yes, yes, I'm sure it will. Uh, we'll see you all on Sunday, then. Well, Jones, I didn't know that you played the church organ. No, well, I, I was driven to it by passion, sir. Really? <laughs> yes, sir, you see, it all happened years ago in Leamington Spa. I, I fell in love with this beautiful lady. Well, she wasn't really beautiful, sir. She was a bit of an acid face, if you ask me. But... <laughs> Very acid it was, actually, but what, what really attracted me to her was her knees. Her knees? Yes, sir, they were very flat. <laughs> I, I never seen such flat knees, sir. And then I found out why. She, very religious she was, she did a lot of praying. Sir, sir. <laughs> and I, I was mad with lust for her, sir, and I, I had to find a way to make her look favourable on me, sir. They were driven by desire, I practised on Christian soldiers on the organ day and night. I practiced with her flat knees imprinted on, on my mind until, <laughs> until finally I did it in my repertoire. <laughs> I flashed with triumph, I went round to her house, but it didn't do me no good. Why not? She'd moved to Bournemouth. <laughs> well, I never lost a touch, you know, I never lost a touch, and ever since then I've Morning, Mr. Manrain. Morning, Pike. Collect your prayer book from Godfrey as you go in. Here you are, Frank. Oh, thank you, Mr. Godfrey. Ah, Wilson. Good morning. Good morning, sir. So glad you were able to join us yes. at last. Well, it's been rather a trying time, I'm afraid. Morning, Mr. Manrain. Uh, I know I'm not late because the vicar's still down by the gate. Yes. Wish he wouldn't do that. Looks as though he's touting for trade. <laughs> Me, Vicar. I wonder if you could help me. Oh, uh, yes, my dear. Always a pleasure to help one of the gallant ladies of our armed forces. Thank you. Uh, is this St. Aldham's Church? Uh, yes, it is. Can I help you? No, it's all right. I I'm supposed to be meeting someone. Oh, well, if they turn up, uh, do please bring them into the service. Wilson, perhaps uh, you could spare me the time for a talk afterwards. Yes, of course, sir. Ah, uh, Captain Barry, if you're all here, I'm uh, ready to begin. Very good, Vicar. Fraser. All right. Have a look round, see if you can see any late comers. I'll do that. You're coming in, Wilson. I shall be a minute. Well, don't be long. All right. Oh, there you are. Hello, my dear. I've been waiting by the gate. Oh, I see. I'm so sorry I couldn't, I couldn't see you off. It's all right. I was afraid I was going to miss you altogether. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad I saw you in your Navy uniform. It suits you terribly well. I'm very proud of you. You look very smart yourself. You think so? <laughs> I must rush or I'll be late. Aren't you going to give me a kiss? Hmm? Yes, of course, my darling. Good. Goodbye, Daddy. Look, I, I, I hate saying goodbye for some reason. Anyway, thank you for coming to see me. I'm very glad I did. Bye-bye. Give my love to your mother. Hi, <coughs> oh, Fraser. Have you been there long? Oh, hi. A wee while. Did you, uh, did you hear all that? I'm afraid of it, man. 
She's a fine lassie. Yes, she is, you see. Her mother left me when she was a baby. I've seen very little of her, really. Though I did manage to send her to a good school. She does your credit. Yes, yes. It was worth it, I think. So, that's all in the past. I, I didn't really want anyone to know. I'm an old blabbermouth. But I promise you, nobody will learn anything of this from me. Thanks. That's very kind of you. Come on, one would. Better go in before we miss all the service. Right. And so this makes it, does it not, even more necessary that we should look into our hearts, gaze closely at ourselves, using the clear light of truth, and ask ourselves, are we any better than that poor woman? If she stood before us today, are we blameless? Would we cast the first stone? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Ah, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Pity you missed the sermon. You might have learned something. Yes, well, actually, I have heard it before. We shall now sing hymn number 385, Onward, Christian Soldier. Oh, excuse me, Pikey. I, yes. I'm on. Excuse, yes. excuse me, Joe. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. Where's Jones off to? He's going to play the organ. He's what? You're all right, Joe. You, you've gone white as a sheet. He can't play the organ. It won't work. Huh? I'll bid 50 pigeons in the pipes. <laughs> Stuck the pigeons down the organ pipes. Blimey, I'm off. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, well, well, just, a, just a minute, Walker. Where are you going? I, uh, I thought I'd help with the collection. Get back in your seat at once. Right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Let us begin. Right, pump away, Verger. <laughs> come on, Verger, come on, get pumping. Oh, what do we need? episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John the Major as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lardy, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Frank Williams, the vicar, and Diana Bishop as Sergeant Wilson's daughter. Getting the Birds, adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd, and produced by John Dias. tempted to say, in a very Alan Smith kind of way, there's nothing worse than having a pigeon in your pipes. But perhaps that's a little too smarty. Dad's Army will be doing it all again next Monday at 2.30 in the afternoon and again, of course, at half nine in the evening. Too smarty. Dad's